So I'm out here in front of Stan Lee's office. I'm going to go in and uh, talk to him about uh, directing because he's worked with so many directors. He's created uh, characters, scripts, uh, and uh, I think he has observed uh, the good, uh, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to directing. So I don't know if Stan knows that I'm going to be here, but uh, whoops, wrong, wrong office. Stan Lee. It's me. Hey, Lloyd. Lloyd. How are you? Okay, thank Glad you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, have a, have a hug. I always like to I rub always up. I always love that. Have a seat. Oh, thank you, Sam. Get right on the couch. Okay. Get comfortable. Very nice. And what brings you here? Well, Stan, I'm working on a book about directing. Direct your own damn movie. Well, who could do that better than you? Very nicely put. However, you have worked with both the great, great directors as well as the, the mediocre and uh, perhaps the not so good. At any rate, can you, you know, maybe just talk a bit about what, what you see as a uh, as well, uh, the you, you principle? Well, you do know I'm no great authority on directing, but I've been lucky because most of the people who've done the Marvel movies have been the top directors. And um, while I wasn't always on the set watching, I was on the set at least for a few hours doing my cameo in each movie. And I find the one thing that they seem to have in common is a great relationship with the actors, a great way to express themselves clearly and make the actor really understand the essence of a scene. And then they have the ability, after they've explained it, and they have confidence in their cast and in their crew, to sort of get out of the way and let it just happen normally and naturally. And from what I've seen, the director, even though there are producers on the set and so forth, the director really is in charge, and he's the one who determines the mood of the movie. He determines the pace. He determines what to emphasize and what to minimize. I mean, it's all really in the hands of the... Even though the script is written, it's still... The director still can make it go in many directions. He can give it a different mood, a different feeling. Let's see, I've been with quite a few directors. I've never been with one who lost his temper or shouted or screamed at people or did any of the things that they often have directors do in movie comedies or in versions where they're supposed to be showing how temperamental directors mm -hmm. are. In fact, they don't even dress funny. The, the and one director that has always impressed me is um, Sam Raimi, who obviously he, he directed the Spider-Man movies. He's the only director I know who actually wears a suit and tie on the set. So all the other people look like commandos, <laughs> all the other members of the crew, you know, in field jackets and jeans and so forth. And... Um, Sam looks like a visitor from the city who just dropped in. It, I asked him once, I said, how come you wear a suit? And he said, his father had ta taught him, when you work with people, always show them respect, which it was an unusual thing to hear. I, I, I think Sam is really great. Brian Singer, beautiful, and working with him, he just always was so prepared he knew just what he wanted how to explain it and he did it did these they three... all remind me of you lloyd because you always know just what you want and you manage to get it very funny did they, uh... <laughs> well, you, I'm, I'm serious <laughs> so often if you have the wrong person in a, in a major role if you have the wrong music if you have the wrong approach or attitude. I mean, there are so many elements that have to all come together and, and gel perfectly. The early um, Captain America movie, I didn't think it was very good. The one that was done years ago, a real low budget movie. I don't know what specific mistakes were made, but it looked like a low budget movie. A Sergeant Fury was done on television as a movie of the week or something, you know, it, a movie for television. <clears throat> and everything about it, I thought, was pretty good. David Hasselhoff played Sergeant Fury, and I thought he did a good job. 
But the mistake they made there, I think the girl they cast for the villain was a good actress, but she wasn't right for that role. And to me, it ruined the whole thing. Very often, when something is um, intended for TV, they feel the need to change the original script to have it more accommodating for the TV screen for many reasons, and very often that ruins it, but that happens with movies too. Very often there'll be a successful novel that people enjoyed as a book, and yet when they film it, unfortunately, they will leave out the very element that made the book a success. Um, and sometimes that element could be magnificent dialogue, brilliant dialogue. But most directors don't want their movie to consist of talking heads, as they call them. So they'll leave out this dialogue, which might be what fascinated the readers the most. Or there could be countless other things that are left. Sometimes a book could sell well, because even though it's a serious story, there was an underlying tone of humor, which um, gave it a good balance. And the director just either has no sense of humor or didn't feel the humor belonged in that, in that movie. I'm probably one of the only people that I've spoken to, <laughs> I speak to myself often, who thinks that, um, what was the name of the fellow who played Daredevil? Ben Affleck. I thought he did a great yeah, job. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I would have cast him as Daredevil. But I thought that there was too much suffering in the movie. And the way I, I had written Daredevil originally, it had a lighter tone. And um, I felt somehow there were many scenes that were too dark. I felt we didn't need all that business in the church in the beginning and end. And um, however, I thought there were some beautifully uh, done things in the Daredevil movie. If you're a young, let's say one is a young, either film school graduate or just film fanatic and wants to get into this mainstreamish business, do you have any suggestions? The only thing that I've heard is most directors come out of film school and they get a job working for a f movie company or for some sort of production company eventually and they start out as an assistant 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 and they work their way up or some of them actually direct a movie in film school and it it looks good and people notice it i'll be honest with you i wish when i were when i was young i wish i had gone to film school i would love to know how to produce and make a movie, you know? And um, I, I would love to be a director if you didn't have to spend so much time doing it. But when they do a big film, they could be away from home for two or three or four months. And it's being on the set every day. And the thing that amazes me is that directors can keep their interest up while they're involved in such minutiae, such little details that they have to concentrate on, where let's do that scene over because the light wasn't right, or let's do that over because the sound quality wasn't right, and they, you do one scene over and over, then you start, you're, you have to wait maybe for a few hours while the camera sets up for the next scene and then you have to do that over. I don't think I'd have the temper. I think you have to have, and you would know better than anyone, a certain temperament for that sort of thing. So many of the really successful directors, they have their own style, and you can recognize their hand in whatever movies they do. Okay, Quentin Tarantino, you can almost always tell it was one of his movies. Now you have that same thing. I mean, it's easy to spot a trauma movie directed by Lloyd Kaufman. You have your own, and, I, and this is great. People spend a lifetime trying to get their own stamp of individuality, and you've got it. You can always tell a trauma movie directed by Lloyd Kaufman, even if the name wasn't on it. 
the unfortunate thing about it, because your movies cater to a certain audience, and they do have a lot of sex and a lot of violence, and it's all humorous, but it's still there. And that, of course, makes it difficult to get a lot of screen time and a lot of theaters. You can't get into enough theaters, be, which I think is a shame. And I, I, I still think the day, now, and this may be bad advice, but I think the day should come when you do one movie like Sergeant Kabuki Man, and you do it as though it's a comedy for a general audience, because so many of your movies have clever concepts. The basic idea, they're always parodying something, like your Toxic Avenger. It's a great idea. A Superman who's as ugly as that, and he has a mop and a pail, and a, I mean, it, it's funny. But because there's so much violence and so much far out stuff, you can't get it to be played for the general audience. Well, I think the next time you want to do a parody of something, you ought to write it, but leave out the things that will make it not acceptable to most theaters, but still make sure that you get your own far out brand of humor in there, if that's possible, you know, without the, the other element. And then I think you'd be, um, uh, you could go to the, the sky would be the limit because your basic concepts are great and you're a good director. It's just you're directing things that only a certain young audience will go for. And that's not bad. I mean, you found your niche and you've got something that most uh, people don't have. You've got your own definite, recognizable style. I, as your friend and your fan, just wish that that style would enable you to be more generally distributed around the field. Now, take something like Kabuki Man. So many things enter into what makes a success. Let's say you had an actor like Jim Carrey playing the role. And instead of spending around a million dollars or so, spend five million dollars. And let's say that you eliminated some of the things that were too far out. You'd have had a great actor, you'd have had a great concept, because I, I think the concept of Kabuki Man is just great. And you might have had a film that could have been another um, Bruce Almighty. You know, because something, to me, something like Bruce Almighty would be your type of story, but it didn't have anything objectionable in it. And again, I feel, I feel silly trying to give you advice because you're a very successful director who's been doing this well for most of your life. And you've got a following all over the world. It's just, I would like to see you have more recognition. Fade out. <laughs> Perfect.